This presentation provides the line service technician with practical tips designed to save time and promote greater safety during the changeout of filter separators. We'll demonstrate proper changeout procedures and methods and discuss the basic principles of coalescing and issues related to single element testing. Our hope is to increase your understanding of and appreciation for filter separator and monitor cartridges as primary defenses against dirt and water contaminants in jet fuel. Filter separator and monitor cartridges are found at each stage of the fuel handling system, from the refinery to the pipeline, to the fuel farm and at the refueling vehicle itself. And because you work with filter separators and monitor cartridges in one of these areas, you already know that each year the safety of thousands of airline passengers depends on your ability to deliver jet fuel that is clean and free of water and contaminants. The filter separator vessel contains two types of cartridges, coalescers and separators. These cartridges are constructed of different materials, perform different functions, and must be properly installed to function correctly. Coalescer cartridges are made of fiberglass and pleated paper. Separator cartridges are made of water-repellent hydrophobic material such as Teflon, silicon-treated paper or synthetic material. Fuel enters the filter separator vessel traveling from inside to outside through the first stage coalescer cartridges. Water present in this fuel entering the coalescers is normally dispersed or mixed into a fine emulsion by the action of the upstream pumps. As emulsified fuel flows into the coalescer cartridge, fibers in the cartridge combine tiny water droplets in the fuel into larger droplets, resulting in the removal of water from the fuel. This is the basic principle of coalescing. As water particles in the fuel are pushed to a fiberglass intersection in the coalescer cartridge, the water particles meet, grow larger, and drop out of the fuel as they leave the coalescer cartridge. The fuel then passes through the second stage separator cartridges and out of the vessel. The sole function of the separator cartridge is to repel the coalesced water droplets, preventing them from going downstream and into the aircraft. This is an example of good coalescing, showing clear uniform water drops one-eighth of an inch in diameter or larger flowing from the element. With good coalescing, the water drops are large enough to be repelled by separator cartridges. This is poor coalescing. The discolored water drops indicate that the coalescer is being disarmed or rendered ineffective by surfactants, which are surface active agents that can break down the interfacial tension between fuel and water. Surfactants include soap, caustic soda, sodium naphthenate, and detergents found in gasoline for cleaning fuel injectors. This coalescer shows an example of hazing, a condition that occurs when the element has been disarmed by surfactants. Instead of coalescing into large droplets, water passes through the element in extremely small droplets which appear as a mist or haze in the fuel. Another form of hazing is called smoking. Smoking occurs at a localized bypass in the element between the end cap and media or through a puncture in the fiberglass media. If you find hazy fuel downstream, try reseating the coalescer to ensure it's properly installed. Velcon threaded based coalescers aid in maintaining a tight fit. Another example of poor coalescing is graping. This occurs when water droplets hold on to the coalescer sock for too long and get too large enabling fuel to enter the droplet. As the clusters of fuel encased in water films contact the downstream separators, the water films shatter into extremely small droplets which are able to pass through the separator and migrate downstream into the aircraft. Graping can result if a coalescer cartridge is improperly handled, which we'll cover in more detail during the changeout segment. Here at the Velcon Test Laboratory in Colorado Springs, single element testing provides Velcon technicians with valuable information related to achieving optimum coalescer and filter performance. Our tank farm, the largest indoor jet fuel testing lab in the world, allows EI-1581 and other performance tests year-round. Through our Colorado Springs office, customers can request EI similarity data reports for filter separators and EI certificates for vessels containing monitor elements. These documents should be maintained by the line manager in the event of an airline auditor inspection. Single element coalescing tests like those conducted at Velcon's test labs provide valuable information about filter separator performance that cannot be obtained from the differential pressure readings. ASTM Manual 5, the Manual of Aviation Fuel Quality Control Procedures, goes into greater detail on single element testing. 
In addition to conducting rigorous coalescer testing, the Velcon R&D Lab in Colorado Springs has also developed recommended change-out procedures to help you safely and correctly change your filter separator elements. No matter what type of filter separator vessel you may have, the principles of filter operation are the same, requiring the same careful attention to ensure change-out safety and success each step of the way. Begin by closing both the inlet valve and the outlet valve to secure the vessel. Turn off the sump heater if so equipped. All vessels, vertical, horizontal, side openers and horizontal end openers are equipped with a water drain valve, sometimes called a clean compartment drain valve. This valve allows accumulated water to be drained from the sump and is usually located on the separator compartment side of the vessel. While the water drain valve is located at different places on different types of vessels, it is usually located at or near the lowest point on the vessel. Some vertical filter separators are equipped with two drain valves, a water drain valve and a dirty drain valve. The dirty drain valve is located on the coalescer inlet compartment side of the vessel and may be labeled. Open the water drain valve and dirty drain valves. Once draining has started, Open the manual air valve if your vessel does not have an automatic air eliminator. Completely drain the vessel through the water and dirty drain valves while continuing to monitor flow from the dirty drain valve to ensure that no dirty fuel remains inside the coalescer compartment or element. Completely draining the vessel is important because when the coalescer cartridge is removed, any dirt shaken loose can fall into the fuel remaining in the vessel, which could eventually end up downstream. Vessel fuel that is drained out is typically recovered in a fuel recovery tank. A couple of gallons of clean drained fuel should be set aside to clean the separators later. Unbolt the vessel lid. Be sure to do so in a cross pattern. Jack the lid up and rotate it out of the way. This will expose the spiders which must be unbolted before the separators and coalescers can be removed. Some vessels have one spider which fits onto both the coalescers and the separators, holding them in place. This vessel has two spiders, one to hold the coalescers and one to hold the separators. Some may also have a bonding strap connecting two spiders, which can be removed with the bonding strap connected. Remove the separators first. If paper separator cartridges are used, they should be discarded and later replaced with new elements. Teflon coated separators should be removed for inspection and cleaning. When removing a long separator, be careful not to scrape it on the tie rod as this may cause tears. Remove Teflon coated separators by the end cap. We recommend wearing plastic gloves or use a poly bag to protect the Teflon screen. After removing a Teflon coated separator, set it in a bucket with a little fuel and gently scrub the entire screen surface with a soft bristle brush or wipe it down with a clean cloth. Next, holding the element by the end caps, Inspect the separator's entire surface of the screen for any nicks or cuts. Any flaws smaller than one eighth of an inch can be repaired with fingernail polish or any epoxy-based putty of the type used for auto body repair. Each separator element should also be water tested before reinstalling. Hold the element by the end cap at an angle and gradually pour water over the entire screen surface. Do not spray the water and don't allow the water stream to fall more than three inches. When the water contacts the screen, it should beat up and roll off the surface of a properly functioning separator. If this happens, the separator can be reused. If the water does not bead, but seeps into the pores of the screen, then the separator must be recleaned. Try washing the element with hot water from a hose or tap. Scrubbing with a soft brush or rag will often help on stubborn areas. Rinse the element with fuel, and then try the water test again. If the element fails again, replace it. If the separator passes the surface inspection and water test, rinse it thoroughly with clean fuel to remove any water. Set the separators aside until ready to reinstall, again being sure not to touch the Teflon screen with your bare hands. The separator gasket should also be checked to ensure a firm attachment to the end cap. If the gasket has come loose, it can be reattached with superglue. Once the separator elements have been removed, you're ready to remove the coalescers. Here, we're removing a threaded-based coalescer element from a vertical vessel. On a side-opening horizontal vessel, the elements are unscrewed from the bottom up. Don't remove any elements until they're all unscrewed. Then remove them starting with the top element first. 
Remember, coalescer elements cannot be reused. Also, keep a clean bucket handy to keep track of all the hardware. You'll need the hardware to install the new coalescers and new or cleaned separators. Once all elements are removed, wipe down the vessel interior using a clean rag or brush with a little jet fuel. Pay particular attention to cleaning the deck plate. This will provide an uncontaminated surface upon which the new coalescers can be installed. If your vessel is equipped with threaded base coalescer adapters and separator adapters, check that there are no cracks in the castings. After cleaning, be sure no water or particulates remain in the vessel. When the vessel is empty and clean, we recommend that an old-style float control be checked to see if it will float on water and that the water detector probe will properly signal the presence of water. It's possible that your vessel may not have one of these water detection systems. When installing the coalescer elements, avoid handling the coalescer sock, even when wearing gloves. We recommend that you keep the poly bag on the new element during installation. Oil from your skin coming in contact with the sock can compromise an element's ability to coalesce water properly, causing graping, which we previously illustrated. Install the coalescer elements carefully, ensuring that the outer socks are not ripped by adjacent tie rods. Be sure to install the coalescers on the proper mount. Here, we're installing a threaded base coalescer in a vertical vessel. Doing so in a horizontal side opening vessel requires that you first stack the elements in the bottom of the vessel, then screw them in starting from the top down. Screw the coalescers on hand tight. Once each coalescer element is in place, slowly remove the poly bag to prevent any buildup of electrostatic charge. Next, tighten each element using an adapter on the square base of the coalescer cartridge. We recommend the use of a Gammon GTP-1224 adapter for installing and removing the Velcon 6-inch diameter screw-based coalescers. Use 30 foot-pounds of torque, which is about a quarter of a turn past hand tight. Make sure all coalescers are evenly spaced while tightening the spider assembly. The procedure for installing open-ended coalescers differs slightly from threaded base elements, which we'll demonstrate here on a single element test vessel. Wearing protective gloves, hold the new element carefully by the end cap and place the element over the tie rod and onto the deck plate. If these elements are stacked, insert a spacer over the tie rod and center it in the element just installed. Install the next element the same way. Place the end cap over the rod. Place the rubber washer provided with the new elements over the tie rod and throw away the old rubber washer. Place the flat washer, lock washer, and nut on the rod and tighten down hand tight. Apply five foot-pounds of torque on the nut with a wrench. This is usually the amount necessary to start the gasket spreading or curling underneath the flat washer. For a V-series separator with an open end and blind cap end, the open end is mounted on the deck plate or mounting adapter. For the older V-series separators that are open at both ends, the larger opening fits on the mounting adapter and the smaller opening is sealed with an end cap. We're now ready to install the cleaned or new separators. Again, we advise using the poly bag to protect the Teflon coated separator as you carefully place the separator over the element tie rod. If you are reinstalling a cleaned separator, Use a leftover coalescer poly bag to avoid touching the Teflon screen with your bare hands. Be sure you install the separators on the proper mounts and that they are centered carefully over the mounting adapters, after which you should remove the separator's poly bag. Some separators are held in place with a Velcon separator seal nut, which is screwed onto the tie rod and seals directly against the separator end cap. Inspect the seal nut to ensure the O-ring is in place and is in good condition. Before reinstalling the spider assembly, be sure that the separators are evenly spaced and all element stool openings are mounted by the correct elements. Reinstall the separator spider assembly and tighten down with five foot-pounds of torque. Replace the vessel lid gasket using a little petroleum jelly to hold it in place. This is especially important on horizontal vessels. Rotate the vessel lid back into position. Align the bolt holes while lowering the jack into place. After re-engaging the bolt assemblies, tighten the lid bolts in a cross pattern to prevent the head from warping. 
Then firmly secure all lid bolts. Close the dirty drain valve and the water drain valve. Start the system pump. With the outlet valve closed, slightly crack open the inlet valve and allow the vessel to fill very slowly with fuel. Slowly refill the vessel at roughly one-third or less of the flow rate for the vessel's specification. This reduces static charge and the possibility of a fire within the vessel. Continue to fill the vessel until the air eliminator closes. If the vessel has a manual air bleed, allow the vessel to fill until fuel begins to flow through the bleed valve. Then close the bleed valve and fully open the inlet valve. Then open the outlet valve. Turn on the sump heater if so equipped. While the unit is operating at maximum flow rate, check the pressure drop across the elements. There should be some indication of positive differential pressure. This ensures that all seals have been properly made during element installation. In review, we've detailed the principal steps involved in the filter separator cartridge changeout process. Feel free to revisit any or all of these sections to refresh your knowledge of the safe, sure way to successfully execute a complete filter separator changeout procedure. We'll now move on to a brief discussion of the changeout procedure for monitor cartridges, in particular the Velcon Aquacon series of absorptive cartridges. Unlike coalescing cartridges, monitor cartridges absorb the water from aviation fuel as they pass through the monitor's shield of water-absorbing particles. As these particles become saturated with water, they swell and eventually restrict the flow of fuel through the monitor. Velcon Aquacon water-absorbing cartridges meet IP specifications for water capacity and efficiency. Please note, do not use water-absorbing monitor cartridges with premixed fuel containing anti-icing additives, also known as FSII, Diagmi, Fizzy, and Prist. Monitor vessels employing Aquacon absorbing cartridges are smaller than filter separator vessels having the same flow rates. They also weigh less and are less expensive. Monitor cartridges produced by Velcon filters include CDF cartridges, sometimes called fuses or go-no-goes, and ACO cartridges providing outside to inside flow for replacing pre-filter cartridges or separators. We'll be changing the monitor vessel on this aircraft refueling vehicle. Begin by raising the vehicle's platform to clear a path to the vessel lid. With the platform raised and locked, begin by draining the vessel by opening the inlet and outlet valves. After draining, begin loosening the lid bolts in a cross pattern. Disengage the bolt assemblies and remove the lid. Remember that some lids are not secured to the vessel once they're unbolted, so be sure to keep a firm grip on the lid once all bolt assemblies are out of the way. Set the lid safely aside and be sure to keep track of the vessel's O-ring seal. Next, if your vessel has a safety interlock assembly plate or spider, carefully loosen the four retaining bolts in order to release the plate pressure on the monitor cartridges. Then remove the plate. Next, wearing protective gloves, remove each of the old CDF cartridges using a gentle twisting motion. Pull each slowly out through the element support assembly. With all cartridges removed, unbolt and remove the element support assembly. Using a clean absorptive cloth, thoroughly wipe the vessel interior, removing residual fuel and residue. With the vessel clean and dry, reinstall the element support assembly using your vessel's recommended torque specifications. We're now ready to install the new Velcon CDF cartridges. We recommend that you handle each cartridge by its protective poly bag during installation. Before doing so, lubricate the O-ring end of each filter with clean fuel to help ensure a smooth, secure fit into the deck plate. Slowly and carefully guide the cartridge through the element support assembly and into its respective deck plate location. Secure with a gentle twisting motion. You'll hear the cartridge snap into place in the deck plate. Follow the same steps with each filter until all are properly installed. Next, replace and secure the safety interlock assembly plate. Be sure the plate seats properly to ensure that all monitor cartridges are securely in place. Otherwise, the vessel lid will not close. Before installing the lid, apply a light amount of petroleum jelly to the O-ring before inserting the O-ring into the groove. Replace the lid. 
re-engage the bolt assemblies and tighten the bolts hand tight. Then, in a cross pattern, tighten the bolts according to the vessel manufacturer's recommendations. With changeout complete, confirm the success of your changeout procedure by refilling the vessel, checking for leaks, and confirming a proper differential reading. Now, circulate flow through the vessel for at least three minutes. Use millipores to check for fibers. Also, check the hose end strainers. Return the fuel to storage. Your vehicle is now ready to return online and deliver clean, water-free fuel safely and efficiently. We recommend that monitor changeout be done after one year of service. If there is a reduction of flow rate, if there is a reduction in differential pressure at the same flow rate, or if the differential reading exceeds 25 PSID or 15 PSID per ATA 103, whichever occurs first. Monitor differential pressure daily. If operating at reduced flow, record differential pressure and flow rate and calculate normalized differential pressure. Change cartridges when the normalized differential pressure reaches 25 PSID. Replace all cartridges if the normalized differential pressure has dropped 5 PSID below the previous reading. Please also check with your company's fuel handling guidelines and operating procedures. It's always advisable to have an extra set of CDF cartridges on hand in case of an unexpected plug-up. As demonstrated, our commitment at Velcon Filters is to ensure the safe and efficient removal of water and other destructive contaminants from your aviation fuel. That commitment begins here at our facility, where we produce the world's finest aviation fuel filtering products. It continues through rigorous research and testing, and is emphasized through our ongoing support of your filter changeout needs. Together, through shared knowledge, frequent and effective testing, and adherence to proper changeout methods and practices, we can help ensure the safety and security of the world's airline passengers. For more information on Velcon filtering products, including our complete line of coalescer cartridges, separators, and monitor cartridges, visit our website at www.velcon.com.